UiPath path has got two design experiences one is the classic and the other is the modern design experience as an rpa developer we should know both the experiences how to use what in this playlist we are covering the classic versus the modern design in a step-by-step -step manner where we are focusing more on the modern design in the previous videos of the playlist we have covered already all of these topics in case you are absolutely new to modern design and you want to get started you can refer to the playlist and get started in the modern design activity now we are looking at something which is called ui synchronization also known as user interface synchronization and in the ui synchronization we have an activity which is called pick and the pick branch today in this video we are going to explore how and when to use the pick and the pick branch so before i go deep into the topic of pick and parallel let's have a quick recap on what exactly is a ui synchronization right so consider a scenario where you are writing an automation where the interface is dynamic and before you do any action, you have to make sure that the interface which you are trying to automate is in the correct state. So a simple example could be that before I extract a data from a website, I need to make sure that the website is already logged in or the website is in the correct page. Then only if I do my download code, that would work fine. Otherwise, the robot would get unexpected results. So whenever we have to do such kind of stuff, that is called UI synchronization. In other words, user interface synchronization in UiPath. Okay. We have already discussed in detail in the previous video. So to give example, these are some of the example which you can relate to. So for example, if you are managing an inventory and before I give an order, I should make sure that the relevant order is available in my stock, right? So That's a simple example banking transaction i want to debit something so i need to make sure that yes the specified amount is available in my bank right so these are some of the example already discussed so i hope the overall concept of ui synchronization is clear to you guys if not please do watch the previous videos now when we talk about the ui synchronization uipath provides us three activities check app state verify execution and the pick branch activity right so check app state and the verify execution we have already covered in the previous videos so i would request you guys to go watch the previous video if you are not aware of this topic okay so today in this video i am going to cover something which is called the pick branch activity okay so the pick branch activity provides a flexible way to synchronize and execute different branches of activities based on specific conditions or events okay so when i talk about the peak activity it is like having someone who is keeping a eye on multiple things which is happening so based on the multiple things he decides an action right so it's like having a supervisor who is looking the complete automation and he says that okay the login page is there do this there is an error which is this do this the login is not successful do this the login is successful extract the data right so the pick activity is just like having a supervisor for our automation which keep tracks of all the condition all the events which are happening in the automation and decides the next action now you might be thinking what exactly is a pick branch the pick branch is the group of activity which are supposed to happen which are selected by the pick activity right so the pick branch activity is the group of tasks connected to a specific things which are being watched this actually happen when the event or the response is set true right so both of these activity work together and then we call it as a pick and the pick branch activity right we are going to see in the real time automation that how this works so for that we are now going to our ui path studio okay so before i go into the actual implementation let's define a use case okay so for example i have to log into this website which is the acme test.uipa.com so what is the user supposed to do provide the email address provide the password and then click on this button which is login okay so if you think as a developer right what are the possible scenarios we could have right so let me take a notepad 
okay so the first scenario would be that i am not logged in okay now how would you know that i am not logged into this browser so the idea is simple if i am able to see this window or i can say that if i am able to see this login button right so i can say that the condition is the login button right so that if means that if i am able to see the login button i am not logged in okay what is the second possibility or the second scenario the second scenario could be this page is available you provide an email id you hit on login okay and you get this thing which says that the credential does not match right which means that you are having the wrong credentials and how do you know that by the error message okay now the third one and the obvious one would be that i provide the correct credential i click on the login button and i am successfully logged in so the third scenario for me is the successful login into this web portal which is the acme portal right so i say here successful login now what is the criteria so if i am able to see the dashboard button that means that i am successfully logged in to this portal right so depending on the different scenarios depending on the different automation you might have different different criteria right so for this use case i am only considering three but as a developer you can have more than three scenarios for any specific use case coming back to my uipath studio okay so this is our same project the modern design where we have been working on i'll go here i'll create a new sequence i'll call this as big branch that's what is the topic for today and i'll create this okay now some of you might be thinking why can't i simply write an automation where i can type the email type the password click on the login button validate whether the login is there it's not there right a normal way of doing it can i do it yes absolutely you can do it and the same we have explained in this video that how you can write a perfect logic right the other thing is that you can also use the check if state and the verify execution together that you can also write right today i am going to sh uh, show you the third approach which is the pick and the pick branch okay so there is no wrong or right way it all depends what exactly you need and which is good choice for your automation okay so the first thing first i'll go here and i'll use something because we are using the modern design so use application slash browser i'll indicate and then i'll point it to this guy select the browser right so this is done okay now what is the next thing we have to do the next thing is we have to take care of these three scenarios if i go to the activities and now i am going to take an activity which is called pick so you will see two activities the pick and the pick branch so let me go here and take the first one which is the pick the pick is a container if you go to the properties right it do not have any properties it is just a container right which contains the pick branch so that's why it is asking you drop the branches here right so how these two activities work together so the pick one is a container which is holding the branches so to work on this you just need to have the branches here right so now i go to the activities again and now i take the second one which is the pick branch and drag and drop it here and first pick branch you can add the second pick branch you can add the third pick branch like this right so if you see here i have how many uh, requirements three so i took one two three let's rename this the the pick one good practice right so this i am using for the login scenarios and this is the login scenarios pick right now the first branch is which is this one which is not logged in right so i'll say here it is not logged in okay the second branch for me would be incorrect credentials and the third branch for me would be the login successful 
okay and depending on that we have to take the next set of actions right why it is showing an error because we have not written anything inside them okay if it is not logged in right what would be the criteria for it is not logged in right so the criteria for not login is this screen maybe where you where you see this button right so i can say here check app state activity right i'll say check app state okay and indicate in the edge i say that hey i want to look for this button which is this one the login okay and i leave this to the default settings right i do not want to change anything this all we have already explained and i can actually use an anchor which is this one right so to make it more uh, stable right and i can say confirm okay so i'm saying that if you find the check app state that means you are doing this right and as discussed in the last video we can toggle this off so the first one is the if you are able to see this thing that means you are not logged in right so i'll go here and i'll use a log message activity and in the log message activity i'll just write an information and i'll say that it is a not logged in okay now talking of the second one the second one is the incorrect credential the second one is the incorrect credential so i'll go here and uh, i'll again use a check app state activity right the concept is same indicate on the screen but i don't have the incorrect credential so let me pause this i'll go to the top and i can pause this for 9 seconds pause here change the email id login right good feature of the modern design and then i got that error message which is the credentials are incorrect so i'll go here and i point it to this one okay looks good and then i just say here confirm toggle branches i can toggle them off and that becomes your second thing now what is the criteria for successful login so i'll go here and i will log into this one and then in the third one i'll go here and i say check app state and i'll point it to the sorry my bad i'll point it to the dashboard which is this one right so in case you are able to see the dashboard button that means you are successfully logged in okay and uh, i'll just say confirm right not manipulating the selectors and all because that's not the agenda for this video i'll just toggle the branches off and this is your third one okay and in all of them what i'm going to do is i'll simply go here and i'll copy paste this log message now why we are using log message let's say in case you are running this automation from orchestrator you would be able to see this log talking of the orchestrator in case if you guys are new to the orchestrator and you want to understand the modern experience of the orchestrator i have a dedicated course which is available on graphy and these are all the contents of the course which i have already covered right and as of now we are offering some discount on the courses as well right so feel free to explore the course the link is available in the description right so coming back to the video so i have put all the three log messages here right so this one is for not logged in if it is incorrect credential i can say in double quotes that this is incorrect credentials okay and here i can say that the login is successful okay so now this completes the implementation of the big branch and this is what it is right now before that you have to write an automation to go grab the assets put it in this right all of that you can do it here right so that's out of the scope so that's today we are just want to see this one right so let's see the state of this one so as of now if i go to the home page right you can see it's already logged in right so if i go here and i say run the file let's see what happens okay so the portal is already logged in so the use activity slash browser will go it will check and let's see what happens 
I'll minimize this. Okay. And the portal is already logged in. Let's go to the output. And you would notice that it says that the login is successful. This message, right? Let me go here and I say log out. Okay. So the URL is same. Okay. So I'll go here and I say run the file. And now if I go here, you would notice that it says that it is not logged in. Okay. For the third scenario, let me come here and I'll just edit this password. I'll click on this button login. Okay. Let me go back here and I'll just say run the file. Let's go to the output. Sorry, in the output, it says incorrect credentials, right? So that means that all the three requirements are successfully able to complete. Okay, so now let's quickly discuss how these two activities work together, right? Most of you would have already figured it out, but let's talk a little bit theory, right? So the pick and the pick branch activities are closely related to each other, right? So we have seen that both of these activity pick and the pick branch work together, right? So the pick activity is a workflow control activity is a workflow control activity, which means that it allows you to monitor multiple activities and execute the first one that completes successfully, which means that it will start with any one of them based on the trigger, which we have specified. It will execute all the action inside it. So as of now, for example, we only have one action, but you can have multiple steps or you can have multiple activities inside this one. Okay. This activity is used to create workflows that involve multiple activities running concurrently and waiting for the first activity to complete before moving to the next step in the process. What this simply means that if any one of this is executed, it won't go to the next one which means that if I am got this message, which is incorrect credential, it is not going to go for this and this one. If the login is successful, it is not going to go for incorrect credential and not logged in, right? And that is what we have seen, right? The pick branch, which is the parent is used to implement the branching logic in the process flow. It enables the process to be divided into several possible path and the automation dynamically decide that which path I have to take. The activity wait for the specified event or the condition. So whatever you have mentioned in the trigger, it waits. It can be as simple as that. Have I received an message or is the notepad file available or any action, any trigger which you want the robot to wait, it will wait for the trigger and then accordingly it will execute, right? So that's how you use the pick and the pick branch activity. I hope with this example, you have understood the concept of the pick and the pick branch. If that is the case, just comment down pick and the pick branch. And I would understand that. Yes, we all we all are on the same page. Okay. So that is what I wanted to cover. Let's have a quick recap, right? So the pick activity is a container, which is an automation workflow container. The main component of the pick activity is the pick branch. The pick branch is a specific branch, which we put inside the pick activity. Okay. Each pick branch has a set of activities that are associated to the trigger. And once the trigger is true, then all the actions are successfully executed. Okay. Triggers are the condition that determine when the branch has to be executed. They can be created using variable expression or triggering the other workflows. Okay. Okay. So that is all for this video. I would like to wrap this video here. I hope this was insightful. If you have any more questions, any more doubts, feel free to write me in the comments or you can also drop me an email as well. I would appreciate your feedback on the video and tell me in the comments what would be the next topic or next video you want to see. So with that, I would wrap this video here. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please do subscribe to the channel and Happy automation.